for cases where your code has to check a lot of different conditions in order to execute different parts of your code, it's usually not very efficient to have a whole lot of if and else if statements. It makes the code harder to read. And in that particular case, it's usually better to use something called the switch statement. And the switch statement can be thought of as a whole bunch of if and else if statements, but with a slightly different way of writing it. The way you use a switch statement is you write the word switch and there's a value that you pass to the switch statement. And then inside the switch statement, you use a whole bunch of cases. So you have a case for some value, which will then run some code. And you have a break statement, which says, okay, that's the end of this case. And then you can do this as many times as you need it. So you can have a case for a whole bunch of different values that all run different code. Now, in the case where none of the values map to a particular case, you can have a default case, which will run some code or do nothing. It's up to you. But the default case will be executed when none of the other values match. Now, if you're coming from some other languages like C or Objective-C, for example, they let you do things like this. You can take that break statement out, in which case when value one or value n are met, the code will run. And in the case of value one, the code for value one will run as well as the code for value n because there's no break statement in there to stop it. Now, this is not legal in C sharp. In C sharp, every case has to have a break command at the end. Your code can't fall through to the next case like in some other languages. And the reason for this is because the designers of C sharp did a whole bunch of studying of where bugs come from in programming logic. And it turns out that a lot of bugs can be traced back to developers mistakenly leaving out break statements in their switch cases when they probably shouldn't have. So the C-sharp language enforces this. You have to have a break at the end of each one of your cases. There's ways to get around this, but they're kind of esoteric, and I'm not going to show you how to do them in this course because they're not good programming practices. Just suffice to say that you have to have a break at each one of your cases. So let's go ahead over to the code and see how a switch statement works. Here I have my switch statement project open, and in my example snippets, I've scrolled down to my switch area. So what I'm going to do is copy some code. I'll just copy the first part of the switch case here. And I'll paste it in and I'll close off the switch right there and I'll save. So in this case, what we're going to do is write some code that does pretty much the same thing that a whole bunch of if else statements would do, but using switch case instead. So here you can see I've got an integer variable called the val and it's being set to a value of 50. And then the switch statement says, hey, what's the value of the val? And for case of 50, the console will write line, the value is 50. So let's save this and run it. And you can see, sure enough, the value is 50 is being written out. So if we go back and change it to, say, something like 51, and we save that and run it, well, now nothing is happening. Okay, let's go back to the code and make some changes. Go back to my snippets. And I'm going to copy the rest of the cases in. I'll save that. And now you can see that we have a whole bunch of cases. There's 50, 51, 52, and a default case. So in the case where I change the val to be 52, and I save it, and then I run it, in that case, the case for 52 is being run. If I change it to something else, say 99, in this case, none of these cases is going to match, so the default case should be run instead. And sure enough, that's exactly what's happening. So let's see what happens when we try to take out this break right here. And you can see that when I take out the break, the little red error squiggle appears under this case. And specifically, it says control cannot fall through from one case label to another. So you can see here that C sharp is explicitly enforcing the rule that you have to have breaks in your cases. So let me just undo that. And we'll save and we'll run it again. And you can see that everything is working just fine. So the switch statement provides a pretty handy replacement for a whole bunch of nested if else. And I think you can agree with me that reading code that looks like this with a whole bunch of cases is a lot nicer than reading a whole bunch of ifs and elses.